Hello and welcome to this week's Australian Stock Market Report. Now this week we're going to look at some of the tools you need to trade, plus stocks such as WiseTech, the Star Entertainment Group, AGL. We'll also look at how ETFs can tell us about an impending stock market crash. Then we'll get into the Australian stock market so I can share with you my thoughts on where it's heading along with answering your questions and looking at stocks for you. Hello, I'm Dale Gillen, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now, before we move on, thank you for showing your support for our channel and hitting that subscribe button. Remember, as you subscribe, click the little bell on the right of it so you keep up to date with our latest videos. Also, remember to tune into our live Australian stock market show, which is on every single Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. Now, this is the show where you get to ask us, the stock market education and trading experts, to look at your favorite stocks and answer all of your most burning questions. Now, when the stock market rises, everyone is happy and investors tend to invest more into stocks. But alarmingly, rather than investing directly, investors are choosing index tracking ETFs. So much so that we are seeing record levels of funds moving into these investments. In much the same way as we saw enormous sums of money moving into managed funds prior to the GFC. Now, with the Australian stock market falling around 17% into June this year, investors became concerned about the possibility of a larger fall. These concerns have arisen again over the past few weeks with speculation of an impending crash. Now, during times like this, investors often make emotional decisions based on fear rather than rational decisions. It is very common for investors to look at short-term returns and run for the hills if their investments are down or they switch funds, investment managers, or even exit the market altogether. Now, history shows that investors tend to make these decisions at the wrong time and in doing so greatly affect their returns. Now, whilst we're seeing record levels of money flowing into ETFs, especially index ETFs, we are not seeing increasing in borrowings, which was prevalent in the previous years leading up to the GFC. Given this, I don't believe we're near the point of any major meltdown on our market. As such, now is not the time to be changing investment strategies or making knee-jerk reactions, as you just might find yourself missing opportunities when the market starts to rise. Now, my prediction is that over the next few years, we will see a snowball effect of money moving into index ETFs at unprecedented levels, as well as investors borrowing heavily to invest in these funds. This will significantly increase the speed of the snowball effect, which will be alarming in the years to come. Now, many of you may remember during the GFC, there were major concerns around index funds with many investors deserting them in droves after they fell heavily. Sadly, history is repeating itself and I can confidently say that index ETFs will be at the forefront of the next major crash and not in a good way. Now it's time we get into what were the best and worst performing sectors last week. Well, the best performing sectors included materials and that was up 5.13% followed by information technology up 3.83%, and healthcare, that was up 0.78%. The worst performing sectors included utilities down 1.95%. This was followed by consumer staples, and it was down 1.52%, and financials, that was down 0.89%. Now, the best performers in the S&P ASX top 100 stocks included Pilbara Minerals up 26.76%, followed by mineral resources up 21.80% and all chem up 20.83%. The worst performing stocks included Next DC down 6.16%, followed by Bendigo and Adelaide Bank down 4.68% and A2 Milk down 4.63%. So what do I expect in the market moving forward? Well, let's get into the charts for our S&P 500 All Lord News Index update for this week. We'll also answer the questions and look at stocks that you've chosen for me. Well, last week, the Australian stock market pretty much did what I thought it would and what I explained last week on my report where it sort of dropped down earlier in the week, but Thursday and Friday it really did come back 
hard and, and to close up for the week. I think it closed up well over 1% for the week. But let's go and have a look at the chart and just tell you what I think the market's going to do over the next six to eight weeks. And I think you might be happy about what I'm going to talk about. But anyway, let's have a look at the charts. On your screen on the left is the monthly chart and on the right is the weekly chart. And I'm going to go into the monthly chart just briefly at the moment, just to share with you where it is or where it has been at the moment. You can see here that all time high there back in January. 7956 points. It's always really, really good to go back and look at the monthly chart. And one of the biggest sins that I see investors do and try and and indeed traders, actually I think I see traders do it more than investors, is they spend almost no time on the monthly chart looking, preferring to look at daily charts and what the market's doing during the day. But that high there, you can see the big move down through here. And if I use my um, tool, you can see here that that low back in June or into that June low was down over 17% into that low. Had that eight weeks straight up that we talked about and I was saying that the market was going to fall for two weeks-ish um, into another low. I think we may have seen that low and this is a really, really good sign here. You can see a big strong bar, bit of an indecisive bar after that eighth week and then we've had the couple of weeks down. Not a super, super strong bar down. We can see the low down, which achieved last week of 6,947 points. And you remember last week, I was saying that the, the market might find some support somewhere between 7,000 and 6,900. And that was where the, the levels on. I put on that weekly chart that I'll show you just again in a second time. But it is possible this could be the end of that. But we still need to really keep in mind that the market can move down. You can see this dashed grey line, which is pretty much the more momentum since the GFC. And this thick grey line is the momentum going back right to the 80s. So we could still see it fall away. And as I've mentioned, one of the scenarios was to fall away down into this sort of where that grey dash line is, somewhere around that 6,600 points. That is still a possibility, although right now it is a lesser possibility in my thinking anyway. But let's go and have a look at the weekly chart and look at what the short-term move is. And if I just expand that up, you can see I've still left these arrows on that I've had here for, for weeks and weeks and weeks here. And as we've seen here, there's one week down. This is our second strong week down into the week ending Friday, the 2nd of September, with the market at 7,048 points. And then last week, there we go, 6,947. So it dropped below that 7,000 point line and closed right up on its high. Now, if we go and look at that move, and we see that from the close the week before, the All Lords was up just over 1% for the week. Although technically it's a down week because it traded lower than the prior week, but it's a really, really nice sign. So. Looking at this, as I said, in the last few weeks, the, the All Lawners Index has done pretty much what I thought it would do. Obviously, this move up for eight weeks, it was traveling a lot harder than what I expected. But this big fall down through here, and I will show you how big the fall is from that high down to this low. You can see nearly 6% fall down into that low. That's a really, really nice sign, and it all goes well for quite a strong move up out of it. So it didn't surprise me to see Thursday and Friday move up so strongly. So there's Thursday's bar, and you can see the 126 point range on Thursday, whilst on Friday it had a 56.9 point range between the low and the high there. But as you can see there, there's Monday of last week, it actually closed up, but it was a down week because it did go lower than the prior day before, sorry, than the Friday. Then Tuesday, it tried to push up, came back down. Wednesday, it pushed really, really low. And this would have had a lot of people being a little bit concerned that the market could fall continually fall further because that was 108 points down and a nice fall. And then Thursday, Friday, it did rise up quite strongly. So what do I think now? Well, I think our market will probably continue to rise up and from this point, I think it will probably rise up somewhere into this sort of area, roughly around here. It could challenge sort of that all time high that we've seen right back there from early this year, right back there. But I think we're gonna move up now for about six, probably possibly even eight weeks up into that high somewhere there, somewhere between 7,600 and, and nearly 8,000 points. Because remember that all time high there is 7,956 points. So somewhere in that range and somewhere down towards into October before we'll start to see that next high. And I think right now we're still unconfirmed. So please don't just jump into the market now thinking it's going to go gangbusters and look for the bigger stocks too, because 
they'll actually lead this charge, the bigger stocks through, uh, will actually be leading this charge up to that. And this will be a nice big move up through, uh, right up through, as I said, through to definitely the end of September, probably right through to the end of October, I'd say. So somewhere around six to eight weeks in that sort of time frame will actually move up. Now, we'll probably have at least one down week within that time, maybe two down weeks within that time, but I still think it looks pretty good. But remember, always wait for confirmation of a move, not speculation of a move. And too many people guess because they see one up bar and thinking, hey, it's gone up. Now the bottom's happened and it's going up and they see one down bar and they start to panic. And that's not how the market works. As I've said numerous times, the market goes up and stairs. You know, it goes up, it comes back a bit, goes up, comes back a bit, goes up, comes back a bit. That's what it does. And we need to be careful of that and not jumping too early. Although, as I said, I'm mildly confident that our market is moving up and so I think we're going to be okay right through to the end we'll probably erode a lot of the losses that we've seen since uh, that January high I think we're going to pull up and it is possible our market will end up in a positive note before the end of uh, the year before um, and I think we probably could be challenging our all-time high maybe in December, maybe in January-ish, maybe into February or March. But I think in this next sort of six months-ish, we'll challenge that all-time high and move up through that through into the 8,000 point mark. So it's good news from me at the moment. But again, I always, 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 always will caution you because we can still, the market can still do anything. This is what I'm thinking and probability suggesting it's going to be bullish. But again, it's unconfirmed. So always make sure you protect your downside uh, risk on that one. But as I said right now, it's much better than news than what we've had in the last few weeks. But anyway, let's get into the questions that you've asked for me. Alrighty, my first question comes from Terry who says, Hi Dale and Janine, I know you're there to talk about stocks, but no one ever talks about the tools. Now he says, each week we see that brilliant graph that you use where us mortals have to use the likes of the ASX. Where the ASX is basic, there must be better graphs to be had without paying huge amounts for very little. Um, thank you in advance, TJ. Really good question, um, Terry. Really, really good question. You are right. Um, but the challenge that uh, I have, I mean, I don't recommend pretty much anything out there, but I find what happens is, is too, too many people go to the lolly shop when it looks, when they look for tools, etc. And what I mean by that is they find something that's, um, for example, um, like the ASX, as you said, is reasonably basic, but that's pretty much all you need. And even me with my broker, I trade with Macquarie, but I don't necessarily recommend Macquarie. That's who I trade with. But, you know, I could trade with any broker, but I've had so many brokers come into my office, people, you know, like Saxo Bank or um, Interactive Brokers, which is one of the top three or four in the world. Um, I don't know how many different types of brokers. Every single broking house in Australia has come to my office and tried to get me to use their software and system and you know they sit in my office and they open their laptop and they go look it's got a thousand indicators and it does this and this and this and this and and after about 10 minutes I just go stop and they go what well, I said I don't need all that crap and they go what do you mean and to me it's like being you know going to an ice cream shop with a hundred flavors or a lolly shop with a thousand lollies there it's like okay which ones do I have and all too often you see these platforms you know um, and online portals that offer free stuff so you can get free charts and you can do that from places like i think trade view's got you can pick up free charts from trade view trade trading view trading view that's it um bigcharts.com incrediblecharts.com um, you can get free charts on them no problems at all um trading view i've had people tell me trading view is better than optima and i think that was the biggest load of crap i've ever heard in my life um but what happens is is they put two and i'm not saying trading view is not good I'm just saying to be better than Optima is, is just the person saying it as obviously has no idea how to trade um, because it's a you don't want to put a lot of stuff on your charts and that's what I'm talking about is they they're trying to entice you to trade that's what I'm saying and they put a lot of stuff on there and it looks like all these indicators and you see all these you know hundred indicators that you can put on your charts and all they do is distract you and it's really a lot of traders say to me, well, which indicators do you use or what are settings you put on your indicators? And I go, well, that's pretty simple. I don't use indicators. And uh, and they go, well, then how do you trade if you don't use indicators? And I go, much easier, simpler. And that's what I say to you is keep your trading simple. And, and Janine and I used to get live data. I mean, we've had pretty much most software providers throw their software at us to check, um, trying to get us off Optima. 
um, to so that we would promote their software. Same with data providers. And Jenny and I used to get live data for a couple of years. And I tell you what, it just drove Jenny and I crazy having live data coming in and the screen, you know, was red and green all gum and things flashing all the time and getting live data. And to this day, Jenny and I haven't used live data for trading, I'd say for about 15 years, roughly. Uh, because we just found it was so distracting from what we really, really do. The only people that need live data really are those people that are trading intraday that really, really need it. If you're, if you're even short-term trading, I don't use live data. Um, Medium-term trading, definitely don't use live data. Long-term trading, seriously don't need it. You get 20-minute delayed data from pretty much mo most brokers for free because what happens with the ASX is they give away the data or they charge for the data, sorry, for live. If a broker wants live data, that's why there's a fee that if you're using a trading platform like a Comsec or whoever they are that you might use, whether your bank, they'll have like a trading fee. If you want live data in for, on your account, you've got to pay probably 30 bucks a month-ish for that live data because that's an ASX fee for that and it's a it's a iris fee too. So they brokers use a, a program called Web Iris. Now that's a professional program that Janine and I have um, that allows us to place trades with the brokers. So, but a lot of a lot of platforms, all brokers use Iris basically to affect all the trades. They pretty much all use Iris. It's not something you need to worry about um, if you're trading with the platform. Generally, I say to people, go to your own bank and use their trading um, platforms and what they are. And generally, the charts on them are reasonable enough as long as you've got a bar chart. Now, I've looked at the charting on, on Macquarie, who's the broker I use, and I went, yeah, okay, if I was just an investor, that's perfectly. I don't need too much. All you need to be able to do is look at a monthly chart and print it up and have a bar chart there and have a good look at it and get some pricing and you can place some basic tools on that. The more tools you've got, the more distraction you're going to get. But one of the things I'll, I'll actually say to you to need to be careful of is most charting packages that you see or, or bar charts that you'll see out there on the web will color code the bars on the close, not like what we do here on Optima. And the reason why we color code the way we do, and we teach this in our trading mentor course, how to color code bars properly. We teach, obviously teach it in our, our diploma course, et cetera, as well. But um, you need to understand this because it's a much more visual way of picking peaks and troughs and movements in the market. What they do on platforms and, and broking houses is they color code on the close. So if the, if the close is below the open, so let's say it opens here and it closes there, it's red. If it's reversed, if it opens, opens there and closes there, the bar's green. And it confuses lots of traders all the time and it's one of the common questions I get all the time going, hey, on your chart, the bar's red, but in this one it's green. Why is it green? And and people miss peaks and troughs, et cetera, because of it. So you've got to be really, really careful with that. But go and have a look. You can get some free charting packages um, or charting software, like as I said, like big charts, credible charts, that sort of stuff. Trade, I think it's called Trading View. I think it's called. They're, you can all get free charts on them, but just be very, very careful. Don't think more is better. More is often the worst thing you can do. Just pull it right back. But just, uh, as I said, most people using their uh, broker's charting platform is good. For those of you who are, want to take things a little bit more serious, you can go and purchase Optima, but it's over $1,000 to purchase the software. And I understand people going, well, I'm an investor. I don't really want to pay $1,000. and I'm not going to pay for the data feeds. You can get data feeds from free. Um, so, but that is what they call after midnight data. And you can find some places. I believe Yahoo used to give away the daily stock market data for free uh, the next day. And, and I have seen people put that into or import that into Excel, Excel Geniuses, and then get Excel to chart for them. Interesting. I don't know how to use Excel like that, but people do that. There is 20-minute delayed data, which brokers will give you if you're trading with them and you're investing with them. Um, generally what Janine and I do, and I'm not generally what Janine and I, what Janine and I do, we get our data on the day trading. We get it at 5 p.m. That's what we get. And you can get after midnight data, which is cheaper. But uh, data from after 5 p.m., you're going to pay $30 a month-ish for it for what they call cleaned data, which is, has all the adjustments and everything for corporate actions into it. You can get raw data, which is what Yahoo do. They don't touch it. They just get it from the ASX. So if there's, if there's corporate actions and things like that in, like stock splits, you'll see data anomalies and things like that. But paying for data provider is really, really good. Uh, because they'll clean up your data for you and give it accurate. That's why with that BHP and Woodside thing that happened a little while ago and other, other corporate actions we've seen, the pricing on those charts will change because of the factors of the, whatever the corporate action is. 
so we do do that. Um, but as I said, you can, you know, you can get data from lots. You can live data. I think it will cost you probably about 100 bucks a month if you want that into a charting package and you want to have a data provider into that if you are trading um, from that point of view. But again, as I said, unless I'm trading intraday or, you know, maybe trading FX where, or where I need high, we've got high leverage and I just need to pick an entry point. But even then, you know, I still think it's too much, you know, it's, it sucks you really in and the whole idea of trading is, is to not be part of the emotions into the marketplace. If you are more serious about learning to trade and you want to trade, if you're doing our short course, our diploma course, we actually include Optima into the, the price of all the tuition fee. So you actually get the software. So if you are somebody who's thinking about learning to trade and being a better trader, then the software that I actually use every single day and every single week and what you see here on the show, we allow, you know, we put that into your, um, your, your tuition. And then once, um, and you get 12 months of the data coming in, and then once that data feed is finished and your course is finished basically, um, then you can, can subscribe to the data yourself at whenever it is 30, 40 bucks a month and they keep upgrading your software and everything. So it's pretty cheap. It's really, really cheap. If you can't afford that and you can't afford good tools, and it's like anything, you know, if you buy cheap power tools and you're trying to build something, you know, like a dog house or a tree house, your cheap power tools that you might buy for 50 bucks, they're not going to last as long as the Milwaukee type things that the professional um, carpenters and people like that use. They're going to burn out. you, you got to expect that. So when you're paying for cheap tools and free tools, you're not going to get um, all the things that you need, but there's nothing for free. They're always going to be promoting something for you, um, to you to get you to trade more and, and obviously set up accounts and hopefully trade through them. So just keep it, keep in mind that's the fact that all the bells and whistles doesn't make you a better trader and actually less is more and I'll leave you with that less really really is more when it comes for tools so hopefully that's sort of a broad thing off the top of my head of um, where you can get some information and data from but happy to you know if you're looking at different things I don't recommend any of those things the only pro platform that I use and Janine and I use is Optima that's it we don't use anything else um, from that point and we have tried everything out there and Optima pretty much kills everything it's been voted one of the best in the world numerous times I think um, it's you know it's used by professional traders right around the world, so it is a great program, and it's Australian. Simple. They're in Queensland, Australian-based company, so and they've been around for about 25 years, and I think I've been using Optima for about 23 of those 25 years, so I have been using it for a long time, but I have used lots and lots of other programs. As I said, we used to get DVDs in the mail all the time from people getting us to test their software, and I always kept going back. To Optima because I always found the service was better and the product was great and it does everything that I need and more. It's one of those programs, the more you learn, the more it'll give you, uh, the more you can use with it. But anyway, that's enough on my promotion. But as I said, you know, if you do want to do one of our courses, we actually include Optima in the course for you. Not the Trading Mentor course because it's cheap as chips, that's dirt cheap. If you can't afford to do the Trading Mentor course, then you shouldn't be trading. That's how cheap it is. But it's that cheap that we can't put the software in it because as I said, the software's over $1,000 to buy and you'd get to own that. So, but um, if you are looking and you want to test, test drive what we do in terms of our education, join Trading Mentor and then you can upgrade within the 30 days, the first 30 days and we'll put all the money that you put into Trading Mentor. We'll put that into your, into your diploma course if that's what you want, but you can give us a go anyway. Pretty much a risk-free trial anyway. But let's get on to the next question. Now you're obviously enjoying this video, so if you've gotten this far, now's the time you can hit that like button. Remember, it's the little button just below here where I'm sitting here and it's got this big thumb here. So just move your pointer down, your finger down, just click on that like button. Now let's see how many we can get. That's your payment for watching the video. I think if you're watching this each and every week, you should be hitting that subscribe button and you should also be making sure you put the big thumbs up. That's your payment um, for saying, hey, you're doing a great job, Dale. We love these videos. I like what you do. The more likes, the better because the more the algorithm likes us and the more people get to watch these videos and learn, which we'd love. And, and Jenny and I, as you know, Jenny and I love helping people and answering questions. So the more people that see what we do, the better. And that's what we hope. So hit the like button now. Um, also remember to subscribe to our channel as well. But the next question we have is from Anton who says, hi Dale, what do you think about WiseTech currently? Just had a new all time high this week after an incredible run the past few weeks. Thanks and ATB from Austria, Anton. I don't know what ATB is, maybe that makes me old. It's one of those little acronyms. 
people shoot me acronyms all the time and I'm like, okay, I may be old because I don't know what that ATB means, but maybe Anton, you can tell me what ATB means um, in, in the comments below. And, and if you know, let me know, put it in the comments below. Hopefully it's not rude. If it is rude, don't put it down, please. But let's go and have a look at uh, Wise Tech for Anton now. I'll bring it up on the screen. So here it is, you can see that on your screen and you can see there on the left-hand side, we have a monthly chart. On the right-hand side, we have a weekly chart. So I'll just bring up the monthly chart and you can see what Anton said. There was a previous all-time high there at $60.40. Then in July, it hit $60.20, sorry, August, $60.23. And then so far into September, it hit $63. It's moved right up, but it's come right off the high and that's not unusual. Sometimes what you see when with a market is if I just draw a horizontal line here at the high here, you'll see a lot of traders sitting below the all-time high. And so you might have a whole, you know, you might have thousands of orders sitting below an all-time high waiting for it to trade through $60.40. So $60.41, 42. Some people might say 1% above it. Some might say 10 cents above it. You'll have a whole lot of these people. So it's not unusual to see uh, when it does move through and sometimes you'll get a big end of town and you'll know that these orders are sitting there. They'll just push it through a little bit and all the orders that were sitting there just get taken up all in one hit. So then we exhaust this vacuum of these traders. So a whole lot of trading happens, but then what happens is you, sometimes you'll get the big end of town selling into that, um, and then it'll push it right back again. So they'll sell into that, and they'll make 1% or 2% or whatever it is on, on a large, a large amount of money. So you can see from that high to that, oh, it's not working just used the wrong tool, haven't I, Dale? Used the right tool. There's the one I wanted. So you can see there, that's 5.21%. So if, you, if you're going to put, if you put $10 million into trading at that, if it, let's, for example, you're a big managed fund or a big player, and you you push the stock through, buy a few, um, few of these stocks at higher prices to push it through there, because you know there's $10 million where the trade's sitting just below that point, and you suck up that $10 million of trade, take them and start selling into that and you make two or three percent on your 10 million dollars that's not a bad day's work is it so and don't say that doesn't happen because i guarantee it absolutely happens there's a lot of stuff like that actually happens but the point is i think what anton's asking is is this sustainable now we've seen these two big months up and, and obviously this other month through here. So looking from that low there, right through there, we're talking 85% rise. I don't think it's sustainable right now. I think we've had, it's had a huge run up. So I think we need to expect that it might come back a little bit over a few weeks. So let's have a look at the weekly chart, Anton, and have a look. You can see here, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks up, an outside bar, 10, 11, 12 weeks up. Look. I'm not saying it can't go further. I'm just saying 12 weeks up is starting to get near the, near the end of the in, end of a run. So it wouldn't surprise me if it goes up next week or the week after, but it wouldn't surprise me if it spends two to four weeks going down at the moment. But I do like the stock and I think it's great and I think you should be continuing to watch it. But if we look here, look at all these runs, look at how many times it's gone up for 12 weeks without pulling back. You know, there's here's longer than 12 weeks and it had a bigger move, but it had falls there, a little fall there, a little fall there, and a little fall there. So it has had a big, sharp, long, sharp move. And I, you know, I could show you a lot of stuff on this, this stock. If I was going to show you a lot of, put a lot of work onto it, I could and show you a hell of a lot of stuff about this stock of why uh, it's a great stock, but also why it runs in cycles and why it's quite predictable in what it runs on. But at the moment, I think we might see a little bit more downside than upside at the moment. But hey, great question, Anton. And remember, ATB, I'm not sure what that means, but uh, make sure you post it down there. As long as it's clean, um, it could be a joke, but as long as it's clean, that's fine. Please post it down below. Now we've got a question from Ash who says, hi guys, can you check SGR and IVC, both long-term? I hold both, um, both are in the red. IVC is for my six-year-old daughter, long-term, meaning 10 years plus. Strange stock for a six-year-old um, to buy for your six-year-old daughter. And, and I'll say that because I've invested, I've had friends of mine, um, even friends of mine who live overseas, you know, many, many years ago, sent money over for me to invest for their, for their babies, their children, their young children. Um, and IVC was, would never be a stock that I've chosen, would have chosen. To me, when you're, when you're investing for children, especially young children, especially, I think it's brilliant that people, if they have a child, put $1,000 into a top 10 stock. 
and sit there and just keep compounding the return. You get dividends in, you keep buying more of the same stock, you know, that sort of stuff and keep keep that happening and, and maybe, and if all you did when you were, had a child and you bought $1,000 worth of a top 10 stock every single year for 10 years and let that sit there, they would probably, and if they kept all those stocks and just kept adding the dividends and buying more of the same stocks, you could pretty much guarantee they're going to retire pretty comfortably or they'll be able to buy a house, you know, when they're 30 or 25 or 30 and they'll have a, a really, really good start in life. But we don't all do that. But you need to buy really, really good stocks. I'm not saying IVC is not a good stock. I'm just saying it's not a stock that I would pick for a child to hold for long term. I'd be picking something like any of the banks. I'd be picking, you know, your Wes Farmers, your Woolworths, your BHPs, your Rios, those top 10, even top 20 stocks. But I wouldn't definitely would never go outside that if I'm investing for a child and I'm investing long term for a child. They're the two things that I do. But let's go and have a look at one of the stocks. I don't ever do two of the stocks, but we're going to bring up, and I always do the first one. So if you're going to give me multiple stocks, make sure the one you want to see most is the first one you type because that's exactly the one I'm going to look at. And you can see, you don't tell me where you've bought it um, and what's going on, but you're saying both are in the red. Right now, it looks like SGR Star Entertainment Group's got further to fall. It's like it's been bearish and it was obviously bearish. It came back a little bit. Um, why has that got Thursday? Okay, so that's the monthly chart. So yeah, you probably find this probably got a bit more to go. Um, let me go and have a look at the weekly chart on this. It did come back a little bit on Thursday and Friday, but it was a pretty big fall down through here. We've had one, two, three, four, five weeks down, which is a lot more than the All Ordinaries Index. So um, to me, is it good long term? Look, let's have a look at the monthly chart again um, from this sort of stock. It's a gambling stock, so you're going to get volatility there. Um, and again, it def this is definitely not a one I'd had for a child either. Um, it, it, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether you said just IVC is one for your daughter, or this one and the other one is for your daughter. But this is also not a stock that I would buy for my daughter. And long term, I just don't like gambling stocks simply because they are a little bit more volatile, and there's things that can go wrong with gambling stocks if you're looking long term you need to look at long term trending stocks those sorts of stocks that really do well telstra would be the absolute rip snorting blinded choice for me for a baby today it really would or somebody young today for you to buy for 10 20 years because i think telstra is going to be long term bullish and it's struggling to get moving but i think it's long term bullish but again you can't go wrong with the big banks macquarie as well i would put that into that one also your west farmers your woolworths um you know as your rios your ford SKUs, your bhps those sorts of stuff but right now i don't have any good news for you on the star entertainment group and again you know you don't just think when you're investing for a child, it's not investing for yourself. Um, and you want low volatility, but something that's going to be good growth over the long term. And so you best be careful about the stocks you buy. Um, but the Star Entertainment Group wouldn't be on my list there. But thank you very much for asking the question. Now we're going to take a question from Matthew who says, Hi Dale, can you have a look at AGL for me? I own the stock. I got in around the middle of March after it broke a downtrend line. It's had a few weeks up. Then had a pullback. I've made nothing and lost nothing. Stock seems to be going sideways since then. What do you think about its future? Should I get out now? Or do you think it's about to turn around and go up? I'm worried it could go sideways for years like it did between 2009 and 2015. And that's uh, what the point of being in it when it's going sideways. I understand that, Matt. Let's go and have a look at AGL for Matt. Now, let's bring that up. I'll have a quick little drink. Now, you can see here, look, it's that's the beautiful trending. I don't think it's going sideways. I just think it's having a normal little pullback here after being really bearish for such a, such a long time. Let's go and have a look here on the monthly chart. And you can see here, it just trends well, this stock. Now, yeah, you can say it did go sideways for a period of time here, but looking here, you had different times where it rose quite strongly. So, you know, from let's go from here to here. So it had some really nice periods where it just generally rose up, but then it trends really well, this stock. I'm not, this is not going to go sideways for years, I don't think. I think it's just having a bit of a pullback. I think right now it looks quite nice. One, two, three, four, five months, six months up a few months down. I would hopefully it would find some support soon. But often when you see a stock that's been this bearish, you might see, if I can use my little trend arrow, you might see things like this, where it gets looks like it's bearish. 
and it's going to fall lower than that low. So if it fell down to that point, let's if we move this down to, if I, I can't move it, there we go, down to here, you might see this sort of thing and then it takes off. And that's not unusual, something that's been bearish for numerous years. But like I was talking about, you know, with some other, with All Lords and some other stocks, you might find it just stops somewhere around here and then starts to rise up. So I would be getting too worried about it at the moment. I just, just say, look, you have stop losses on a stock for a reason and you do. And, and quite often when people get into stocks that are going sideways, they jump out just before it takes off and people go, well, how long is that? And you can't say... You know, it's like a piece of string. You can't say how long that's going to be. Some stocks will go sideways for six weeks. Sometimes they'll go, go for six months and sometimes they'll go for six years. It just depends on the stock and what's going on. But you do have, that's why we have rules around things. But I do think AGL will be more bullish soon. I, don't, I think it probably will find some support there before that, that low that it had, that long low that it had that, that I showed you there. I think hopefully it'll stop fairly shortly. Maybe in the next week it should stop if it hasn't stopped already and start to move up. So I think this time in three months time, I think you'll be in a completely different position, but hey, anything can happen on the market. And that's why I constantly say, make sure you've got a stop loss on it. And if you haven't, then go stand in front of the mirror and have a big talk with yourself about why you don't have a stop loss on it and then make a stop loss. And if you don't know how to set a stop loss, get hold of my book. Both of my books talk to you about how to put stop losses in and you can still get my first book for free you can just have to pay the shipping, which is like $9. So it's the cheapest $9 you'll have, and it'll pay for itself in one trade, or less than one trade, or a of one trade. So and it's worth it just to sit down and read it and understand how to do the market a little bit better. So please, if you're not sure how to do that, get my book. Just go to our website, uh, wealthwithin.com.au. It's on the homepage. There's a button right up the top of the homepage near there. Just click on it. Pay the $9 and you'll get the book sent out to you for free. So please do that. The next question we got is from Donna who says, Hi Dale, just thinking about the seasonal trends of the market. She says September is on average down month now given that a number of our larger companies like BHP, uh, FMG, etc. go ex-dividend at this time of year, which typically lowers their share price and they are so heavily weighted in a market. Could this be part of the reason for the seasonal trend? Absolutely. It's generally our market, you'll see our market will have a low September, October or November, one of those three months. They're generally not always October, not always September, not always November, but you'll generally, it's like an elastic band. And sometimes, you know, you do, as I said, you know, you get reporting season that we've just completed here in Australia, late August into September. You do get dividends being paid. There's a whole lot of cyclical things that happen on our marketplace with our institutional investors and moving funds and tax time and those sorts of things. So we generally get a peak of our market sometime earlier in the year, maybe February, March-ish. We have a low sometimes March, April, sometimes May-ish. Um, and then we rise up to another peak and then come down in September, October, November-ish. It's all a little bit elastic um, and it's a little bit harder, but it's all seasonal trends. And that's why Jenny and I will be, you know, starting to talk about, you know, having our market having a high probably around February, maybe March. But once we work out where the elastic band is a little bit, because the peak's can move along and where the peak moves along in time obviously the trough moves along in time so you can't just say well every September we have a low and every March we have a low and every January there's a high and, and every August there's a high it just doesn't work that way because um, it would would be nice if it did but it just doesn't work that way but right now I 100% agree with you it's more of a seasonal trend and it's just something that we look for, but we also look for triggers to give us confirmation that the move's actually happening rather than make it. So thank you for that observation. It's really nice for you to do that. Anyway, but thank you any for everybody that's sending in your questions. Uh, but unfortunately, as is the case every week, we just can't answer everybody. But remember to get the best chance to have your question answered is to publicly subscribe to our channel and then type your question below in the comments section. Now remember that we do these Monday market reports each and every week. We also do our live stream on Tuesday night, 7 to 8 p.m. And I expect everybody to be on the live stream tomorrow night at 7 to 8 p.m. If you do want to chat to Jen and I, make sure you give us a call. It's 929-099-88, that's 03 for Melbourne. 929-099-88. Pick up the phone and give us a call because we'd love to chat to you um, at 7 to 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Time tomorrow night. But hit that subscribe button now. Remember to click the bell on the right of it. And also give us a big thumbs up if you like our video. That's it for me. I'm Dale Gillen, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. Goodbye, good luck, and good trading.